This is me boarding a United Airlines flight. I usually do that a few times a week. Their theme music is George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. This is me playing Rhapsody in Blue with the great American conductor Joanne Folletta on the podium. I love playing this piece. I mean, everyone loves this piece. And here's Gershwin playing Gershwin. Rhapsody in Blue was first performed in February 1924 in New York City. It blew everyone away from the very first notes of that iconic opening clarinet glissando. Gershwin called this piece a musical kaleidoscope of America, and I've always loved the idea of that. How he was processing his life in his city, his America, in the 1920s. He's celebrating the melting pot, the American dream that allowed him, the son of immigrants, to become a superstar who'd be featured on the cover of Time magazine the very next year. But other things were happening too in 1924. Three months after that historic first performance of Rhapsody in Blue, President Calvin Coolidge signed the Johnson-Reed Act, a federal law basically designed to protect white supremacy in this country by drastically restricting immigration from Asia and Europe. Completely unintentionally and for complicated reasons, the new laws also opened a pathway for arrivals from the British West Indies, and one of them was my grandfather, who came from Jamaica to Harlem that year. In the 100 years since then, waves upon waves of new arrivals have transformed this country. America is a completely different place than it was in Gershwin's time, and it sounds completely different too. But I think Gershwin's vision of this musical kaleidoscope was an embrace of the future. So as we get ready to celebrate the centenary of Rhapsody in Blue, I'm honoring Gershwin's legacy with a radical new arrangement of the piece by the Puerto Rican composer Edmar Colon. We're filling up Gershwin's soundscape with the music of my own lineage and Edmar's, Afro-Caribbean rhythms and instruments, as well as the sounds of Americans who've come from all the corners of the globe. It's past meets present, the known meets the new, the timeless meets the timely. That's not R&B now, yeah, I know it. Uh, you were hearing this every time. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We recorded the piece this fall with an orchestra made up of young musicians from the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. And that might be the best part of all. The next generation finding something brand new in something 100 years old. History just keeps on going, and I think George Gershwin would be so thrilled to know that his music is still part of the colorful, beautiful, multicultural musical kaleidoscope of America, now and for generations to come.